Hey everybody, and welcome back to Josh's Smart Home. Today, we're gonna to be taking our mirrorless devices and taking them to the next level with some automations through the best smart home platform, Home Assistant. So these are gonna be local automations utilizing a couple of smart lights as well as their awesome presence sensor for mirrors. So stay tuned. If you're new to Josh's smart home, I've been building out my smart home for about 10 years now. And I wanna share with you what I've learned along the way to make your home smarter. So you're probably saying, but Josh, the mirrors app allows you to do some automations and everything. Sure it does, but nothing's as good as Home Assistant. And there's three main reasons for that. The first reason that you wanna go with Home Assistant is because of the local control. You don't have to worry if you have a stable internet connection or any internet connection at all. Everything can be controlled locally in your smart home. So these devices can work totally offline. They use a combination of either Matter and or Apple Home to be able to do that right through your home network. The second reason that you wanna be using Home Assistant over the Mirrors app is the ultimate customization. You can just do so much in the automations of Home Assistant. And we're gonna get to a reason why in just a second, but you have all kinds of options, all kinds of things are exposed for these devices and other devices. And that leads us right into number three. And the last reason that you'd wanna be looking at the Home Assistant integration versus utilizing everything right in the Mirrors app is the interoperability because you can utilize so many devices in Home Assistant. So you can have these paired with some Akara devices and you know paired with uh, different brands like Lutron. Maybe you have you know the switches in your house. There's just so many options that you can utilize these devices to interconnect with. Maybe it's a Rio link and you have your doorbell and you press the button on the doorbell and it can light up a, uh, you know one of the lights here, a certain color so you know somebody's at the door. There's just so many options and we're gonna continue to get to those. Now I wanna talk a little bit about the mirrors devices themselves. And first I wanna talk about this smart presence sensor. This utilizes millimeter wave technology. So even if you're you know, sitting relatively still, not really moving around, you don't have to worry about the motion sensor being able to pick you up. It can definitely do the job. And this works at about 12 meters, which I think is somewhere around 36 feet. Um, if you're here in the US like me and don't know your meters very well. So it's a pretty long range device. It also has a light sensor on it. So it can tell how many lux you know, you're know you getting in the room. And basically if you just think of lux as how bright it is, it's the easiest way to think of it. That way you can run different routines if it's already bright in the room, maybe you don't need lights to turn on, or if it's you know pitch black, maybe you want to turn on just a little bit. And if it's you know twilight, maybe you want full brightness there so that you have you know good light for whatever it is you're doing in your room. And this is a matter enabled device. So I was able to connect this directly with Home Assistant, utilizing the Matter integration, connected pretty easily and no real hiccups there. I will say that there are certain, um, you know, adjustments that you can make only in the Mirrors app. So be, you know, paying attention to that. But if you're just looking for out of the box, um, you know, working and that type of thing, definitely hook it up with any of your Matter controllers in your home. Next up, we're going to move over here to the Mirrors Smart Wi-Fi LED lights. And these are pretty neat because they are color changing and they do work with Apple HomeKit, which is how I integrated these with my smart home through Home Assistant. So when you're working with any of these Apple HomeKit devices, what you wanna do is go into your Apple HomeKit hub, um, you know, on the app on your iPhone or iPad and add the device there utilizing the Apple Home code that's on the device itself. Once you do that, you wanna delete it from your Apple Home. But one word of caution here, if you utilize ERA devices, make sure that you go into their settings and turn off the Apple Home connection that's in there. If you don't, when you delete it from the Apple Home Kit, you're going to delete it from your network, which means your home assistant is not going to be able to see it. So make sure if you have ERA, you turn that off first, delete it from your Apple Home Kit, and then you can go into Home Assistant, go into the Apple Home integration there to connect your device. And these add very easily there. You just type in that eight digit number and you're good to go once you select the device. And last, but certainly not least, the Mirrors Smart Ambient Light with color changing. This thing is so neat. 
definitely a highly recommended item. As you can see right here, it is also an Apple Home item. So you can utilize the local connection to control this directly in Home Assistant, following the same procedures that you did with the light bulbs that I just mentioned. For full transparency purposes, I do just want to call it out that these devices were sent to me free of charge, but they're not reviewing any information. They're not telling me what I need to say. So this is all my fair and honest review. All right, let's move along to the devices and the automations. All right, I just want to show you the devices really quick and then we'll get to the automations. So this is the smart presence sensor and you can see I have it set up just a little stand here, but this does collapse up and the cord can go out the bottom if you wanted to put this you know, directly against the wall. There are several different mounting options and it does have a cover here if you have pets or anything like that and you want to block off the bottom. So only have you know the uh, presence sensor above a certain level. So pretty nice, neat and uh, you know, compact item here that you can utilize and uh, pretty impressed so far with this one. Next up, the smart Wi-Fi color changing LED bulbs. And uh, they look pretty much like regular bulbs, which is a great touch. I don't like anything that looks too weird, um, but they look really neat when they're powered on and changing color. So I'll show you those in just a bit. And my favorite out of these lights is definitely this ambient light with color changing in it. This is pretty neat. It looks really cool. Just I, I can't say enough good things about this light. There's so many applications, either in a living room or a bedroom or an office. I just really like this one, and uh, you're going to see why in a minute. Let's create our first automation. And for this one, I'm going to turn on the theater light. It's a sign outside our theater when presence is detected in the theater, and turn it off when the presence is no longer detected because I'm not gonna actually handle any of the lights inside the theater with this automation. I don't need any delay or anything like that. Typically, if I'm leaving an area, I like to have a short delay at least for the lights so that they can you know, dim down after I leave the area, not while I'm trying to walk out and trip over something. Nobody likes that. But like I said, with this case, because it's outside the theater, it's just a sign. I'm going to do it instantaneously when the presence is detected or not detected. And here in Home Assistant, you can see that what I did was a when, and this is the trigger in this instance. The presence sensor either became occupied, which is the top one, or became not occupied. Then we're going to take some action. And in this case, I'm going to go down to the then do, which is the action area of this. And I'm going to make um, a choice here. So it'll be like an if statement. So if there's presence detected, we'll turn on. If presence is not detected, or actually otherwise in this instance, I'll just have it turn off. So let me go ahead and put that in here. So here you can see how it played out in Home Assistant. If the theater presence sensor is occupied, that means somebody's here, then you're going to turn on the theater sign. Otherwise, because it got triggered because the presence was off, we're going to turn that theater sign off. So here's what that looks like. As I mentioned earlier, you can use the Lux for the presence sensor as well. So here's an example. If it's you know above 50, then we can do a certain thing like turn the lights on at a higher um, brightness. Or if it's below 50, maybe do something different. So you do have that capability too, which is really neat on this device. Next, I want to do the doorbell automation that I mentioned earlier, turning one of the lights a certain color. So to do this in Home Assistant, first I'm going to go into the new scene. And I'm going to set up mirrors red and have the doorbell icon. I'm sticking it in the study because that's where I put all my random things that I work on. And then you go in and go into the device, the lamp in this instance, and I selected red at 100% brightness. And this will allow me to go into the automation and select this scene and have this occur. So for my doorbell automation, I start with the real link doorbell and when visitors turned on. And what that means is when somebody presses the button, that's what they call it here, home assistant for this particular doorbell. And when that happens, we want the light to turn red. And to do that, you can see here in the then do, which is the action portion in home assistant, I activated a scene and I did the mirrors red. So when that doorbell button is pressed, then you'll see the mirrors light up red. I'm gonna create one more automation just so you can see what you can do with this. And then I'm gonna go through some other automation ideas that you might wanna utilize in your smart home. So this next one with July 4th just occurring here in the US, it's a little bit patriotic, but I think everybody will like it anyway. Um, you can substitute your own colors if you live in a different country or if you have you know, a sports theme that you wanna go with, whatever it is you wanna do, feel free to do that. But I'm just gonna show you 
I had an idea that I had for different motion or, you know, maybe the washer or dryer's done. This is a bit of a patriotic theme here. So what I did here was use the motion sensor in the game room as the trigger. So under when I did the motion sensor in the game room and when it's triggered as motion, then what happens is that we have a 20 cycle repeat that occurs. And the first thing that happens is scene patriotic is um, triggered with a two second transition. It delays five seconds incorporates patriotic two scene with a two second transition, waits five seconds, and then it goes through that repeat cycle. So essentially you're gonna see 40 different scenes. Um, you know, you would if you waited that whole time. I'm just gonna show you a brief picture of what this actually looks like. So you can see the uh, red and blue with the white and the other light. And that's how we have the patriotic scene here moving through in the US just after July 4th. Home Assistant, your imagination really is the limit. So I'm just gonna go through a few more automations that you may find useful. And the first one is using the presence sensor for a security device. You could certainly have things set up where if you're away and the security system's um, armed, you could have the presence sensor in conjunction with your motion sensors, window door sensors, et cetera, to report to you if there's something out of place there. Next for the presence sensor, you could utilize something like if there's presence detected in the bathroom for five minutes, um, you turn on the exhaust fan, for example. So you can do all kinds of things like that and just automate some of the other processes in your home, utilizing a smart switch or some smart light bulbs there. And you can also utilize the status of your home. So if it's away or it's at night, Maybe you don't want to have certain things triggered, like the lights turning on at full brightness, um, maybe, maybe having a reduced brightness, or maybe not at all because you're not home and maybe it's a pet that's, you know, triggering something to turn on the light. Uh, or, you know, it's a doorbell and you really don't need to flash red anywhere because you're not home to even see it. So there's some different opportunities there based on the status of your home as well. And another example of something you can do with automation is the linking of the mirrors devices into your other smart home setups. So maybe it's your Google Home or your Amazon Assistant or your Apple Assistant. You can have everything integrated there because Home Assistant is able to expose it, which just opens up so many more opportunities. Like I said, your imagination is really the only limit here. Remember to always name your devices really well in Home Assistant. It makes setting up the automations extremely simple. And if you ever have to troubleshoot, it's super easy if they're named very clearly and you know immediately which device you're talking about. With that being said, if you like the mirrors and Home Assistant combination video, make sure you like it and hit the subscribe button if you're looking for future videos on Home Assistant or home automation, because I look to put a lot more of those out in the future as well. And make sure you leave a comment below with your favorite automation utilizing the smart lights or presence sensor. I always like to see what you guys are up to. I'll see you in the next one.